Well, good Monday morning to you. And we are still dry here. We haven't got any rain. So, but it's getting brighter out. No sun yet, but at least it's getting brighter out as the days get longer. And we are in Psalm 118 this morning, a little bit longer. Certainly longer than last one. Last one was only two verses long, so um, we'll jump into 118 here this morning. Psalms 118, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, his faithful love endures forever. <clears throat> In my distress, I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Through hostile nation, Though hostile nations surround me, I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Yes, they some surrounded and attacked me, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. They swarmed around me like bees. They blazed against me like a crackling fire, but I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. My enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. The strong right arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not let me die. Open for me the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord, for the godly enter there. I thank you for answering my prayer and giving me victory. The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. So again, this psalm is a, uh, it's written by an unknown author. Um, we're guessing the time is uh, during Ezra and Nehemiah's time when the people are being uh, released a little bit from captivity to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the city, rebuild the walls and uh, the temple. And so uh, during that time when Ezra and Nehemiah went back to build and the people went back to build. The enemies around them, again, were not happy about this. And so they actually had to have guards stationed uh, while the workers worked uh, to ward off attacks. They had to have, and so that's where, uh, when it's talking about the, they, the enemies surrounded and attacked me, uh, they swarmed like bees, buzzed like crackling fire. Um, even though they were set free, uh, in verse oh, 12 and 13, to do their work, it was um, the enemies weren't just going to let it happen. God had worked it out so they could go, but still there were enemies around. So even in that time of, of building and being um, kind of set free from, by God to do this, God still made sure, which is, it's interesting, but the enemies were still around. And so the people were still dependent on God um, to protect them and to watch out for them. 
<clears throat> they still had to put up the guards and stuff, but it was God who, who watched over them. In fact, he says he was able to, um, even with the hostile nations in verse 10 that surround me, I destroyed them with the authority of the Lord. Uh, he didn't boast in his own power, whoever this author is. He didn't boast in his own power about how they won the battle and they be defeated the enemy. He still gives credit uh, to the Lord. It was only the authority of the Lord that allowed him to do that. And so that's why he starts the psalm out uh, as, in so much thanks. Um, you know, let Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron and the priest, his faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, his faithful love endures forever. It's just a constant reminder and thanksgiving that it is the thankfulness of the Lord that um, it's his faithful love that endures forever. He's the one who took care of them. And they have their, they have their eyes focused in the right spot. Um, he talks about uh, in verse 19, to open the gates where the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. These gates lead to the presence of the Lord and the godly enter there. We talked about that yesterday in the message about the righteousness, being righteous and pure. We, um, we now, as we look forward to Jesus coming back, uh, and yet we still, don't wait here and just twiddle our thumbs waiting for him to come back. We ourselves uh, work at um, serving him and, and following him. And, and we, uh, we are becoming more like him. And so it, that, that's the righteousness. We, we do right thinking, right speaking, right actions. We become righteous. We become more like Jesus, and we are then entering into the presence of the Lord. Uh, there's a verse in there, uh, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. Uh, that's a reference to Jesus. And we hear that uh, quoted in the New Testament on several occasions. Uh, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we should be able to, to, to say that every day. Not that every day is, is a good day because of the things that are happening in it. These guys were still under, um, kind of under siege from their enemies, but they still could say, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We'll rejoice in this day because God's made it and God has given us this day. It may not be what we think is a good day or a perfect day, but God has given us another day of life, another day of breath, and there's purpose in that day. However it's working out, there's purpose in that day because God created it. And so um, <clears throat> that's a verse that I use uh, with every family at a funeral, which um, it sounds kind of strange, but God knew, God knows what day your funeral is going to be. He knows what day my funeral is going to be. And it's a day that he created to bring us together as family and friends. It's a day that he created to draw us closer to him. Uh, when we have no control over that, that death, um, God is there, he's meeting us there. He's in that day with us. And so, um, again, a, a familiar verse and one that I think we should remind ourselves of regularly that each day that we get is a day that God has given us and there's purpose in it. Um, <clears throat> if you were follow, if you had your Bibles open, we're following along uh, between verse eight and nine, that's actually, this is the center of our, of our scriptures um, from Genesis one to Revelations, whatever that last verse is, this is the center of the Bible. So um, not that it was set up that way, divinely or whatever, but somebody counted all the verses and this is a center. So just a little fun fact. But I also wanted to just kind of focus in here on verses uh, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, as we close. Um, the Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. 
It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in the people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. And so, again, that's, I think this is a huge reminder to us even today. Um, right now in this building project that Ezariah and Nehemiah are overseeing, um, they're acknowledging even with all the enemies there, they're going to look, um, they're going to look at triumph over those who hate them because God has ordained that this city be rebuilt and the walls be rebuilt and the temple be rebuilt. So it doesn't matter how much the enemies fight. They know Ezariah and Nehemiah are encouraging the people and reminding them, we will win. We will look with triumph over those who hate us because this rebuild is going to happen. Not because we're so tough and strong, but because God said it's going to happen. And do we look at that in our lives? Are we getting overwhelmed by things in our lives, um, situations in our lives? Or do we look and say, no, God has, has declared us winners in Jesus. Uh, what can mere people do to us? Why do we live in fear? I understand there's crazy stuff going on. I told Lisa yesterday, I said, I feel like I, I, I sound like a broken record. But I just really think we need to grasp this reality and this truth. Yes, there's crazy stuff going on in the world, but there was right here. You're rebuilding a temple in the midst of your enemies. And you don't have an army to, to, to fight these enemies. And yet, you're winning because God is on your side. We have Jesus. We have the power of the resurrection. We have the power of the church. I hear people talking about, oh my gosh, if, if so-and-so is elected or this law gets passed, the church is going to be... The church isn't in trouble because of outside forces. Jesus said, he will, I will build my church, he said, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Do you think the Republican or Democratic Party has any chance? We've got to get our eyes focused on the truth of where our power rests and where our hope is. Mere people cannot do anything to us when we're serving and living for the Lord it's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust people. I, like I say, I'm concerned about our country. I, want, I don't want it to fail. I want things to be great and wonderful. But guys, we can't trust people. We have to put our trust in the Lord. We have to figure out biblical ways to live and to solve our problems. And it's not fighting the way the ways of the world. So we're not going to trust people and we're not going to trust princes. We've got to get our eyes focused back on Jesus, the power of the resurrection and the power of the church. That's our hope. And clear back here, hundreds of thousands of years ago, this writer is reminding us they had not yet received the Messiah. Their hope is simply in God himself. And they say, we aren't going to fear people. What can they do to us? They're still captives of a, of a foreign country. They're still living somewhat in slavery and bondage. The new church was planted. Uh, we're going through that now. After the resurrection of Jesus, the church is planted. The Romans haven't gone away. Still a very oppressive government. The government doesn't like these new Christians because they won't acknowledge Caesar as king. The Jews, who these this new church is coming out of, the Jewish people don't like these new Christians because they're claiming the Messiah has already been here, so they don't need the temple. This new church that's planned, it doesn't have any friends. And you and I are still sitting here staring at our phones or our laptops this morning because faithful people believe in God believed in Jesus and the power of the resurrection, believed in Jesus' words of the power of the church, not in some leaders. We're sitting here because of faithful men and women who put their hope and trust in the Lord. That's the challenge for you and I today. This is the day the Lord has made. How will you and I use it? Will we live in fear? 
we get into, oh, woe is me, conversations with our friends, or will we lift up the name of Jesus? Will we explain to people our hope is in him and our trust is in him? And uh, will we live in that truth? Let's pray for that strength and courage today. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement. And uh, yeah, we might, it might sound like a broken record, but we need to hear it over and over to be reminded that even in this crazy world, with supposedly all this power in these worldly leaders, they will all bend a knee to you one day. You and you alone are God. You and you alone have provided our Savior in Jesus. You and you alone have provided our power through the resurrection and the church. Give us the confidence and the boldness to live in that and to walk in that today and to celebrate this day that you've made in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good to see you, Patty and Bill and Sherry and I think Joanne, I think you were on, and Elaine and uh, gosh, who else is here? Gail and Steve, good to see everybody this morning. Have a great day in the Lord, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.